This highway leads to Lesotho, a high altitude landlocked kingdom completely encircled by South Africa. It is one of only three independent states entirely surrounded by just one country. The others are the Vatican City and San Marino, both encircled by Italy. Lesotho is crisscrossed by a network of rivers and mountain ranges. The tallest peak is nearly three and a half thousand meters high. The country was previously the British Crown Colony of Basutoland, but it declared independence from the United Kingdom in 1966 and is now a fully independent sovereign state. An image of the king, let's see the third, appears on the banknotes with his two predecessors. The country's income is mainly based on agriculture. The majority of households subsist on farming. Almost 50% of the population earn an income from the land and provide nearly two-thirds of the country's wealth. But farming is particularly difficult in the high valleys where the soil is poor and soil erosion a constant problem. The rains are usually heavy, causing rivers to swell and water gushes down from the mountains, washing away valuable topsoil, leaving the land in poor condition. Determined to help such countries is Dr Ken Dunn, who runs a charity called Africa's Gift. He is passionate about protecting the Earth's resources and developing sustainable solutions. On the 31st of October 2009, I took a leap of faith. I uh, resigned my, my post as assistant head teacher at the City School in Sheffield and I launched into this work full time, uh, namely running a social enterprise called Connecting Communities Worldwide and actually channeling all our efforts really through Africa's Gift, a registered charity. And we've been bringing school groups, university groups, uh, University of the Third Age groups, um, scouts and guides to uh, the south of Africa, to the east of Africa and to central Africa to continue this work. In January 2020, I joined a group of eight ladies from Howden and rather amused A groups who went to Lesotho to help in any way we could. We were to spend several days at Malay Lele and before descending into the valley, stopped to take a look at the view. An enterprising jeweller had set up a stall in anticipation of our visit. By now we had left the tarmac roads behind and continued down a bumpy dirt road to reach the village. There are no hotels in the area and we were to stay at Malayali Lodge, which provided you don't mind staying in a basic room and going to bed by candlelight when the generator turns off. It's a marvellous place to stay. The lodge developed from a trading post established by Merwin Bosworth Smith in the early 1900s. When he died, he was buried in an unmarked grave at the post. The trading post was subsequently purchased by Mick and Di Jones, who developed it as a place to stay. For those attracted to the area, for walking or pony trekking, or simply enjoying the relaxing accommodation. Each evening, weather permitting, guests can enjoy musical performances by local groups.
So one piece of work that we have been doing in conjunction with the local schools and the local church is to actually develop a teaching farm. And we've actually been very fortunate in getting some funding uh, from Rotary Clubs in Rotherham and in Barnsley and in the, the wider districts of Yorkshire and then the wider communities in uh, Rotary International to actually create a teaching farm. And on that teaching farm, we're extolling the virtues of permaculture and also conservation agriculture, which, which really has as its premise zero tillage. So we're not plowing, covering the soil with a cover crop to retain the moisture, to block out the sun, and very crucially, to block out the wind from drying out the soil got a little pod can you see the little pod here it actually is so it's if it's got a little pod like that it's nitrogen fixing so the nitrogen the nitrogen will actually come from the sky into the soil and make the soil rich so that when we grow when we plant our food crops our food will grow better because the soil is rich before travelling to Lesotho, Margie, Mavis, Dean and Faye were among those who had raised funds to buy trees. Each person who gave a donation were given a card in the shape of a tree on which they could write a message. The cards were brought to Lesotho and in the church at Kent Farm they were used to decorate the branch of a tree. On the way to Kent's farm, we stopped at a nursery to purchase the trees. The mixture included fruit trees, those that produce wood for burning, and others ideal for combating soil erosion. We'll have 50, 50 of the chichi and 50 of the, of the robida. Robida. Well, we can actually get them all in the... Eucalyptus and oh, that's 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 already. Another thirty. Ah, Kelly Do you like do you like inhaling petrol fumes? <laughs> this is the smell of Africa. Yeah. The smell of Lesotho. Lots of petrol. Kelly Boha, can you write me a receipt, please? Okay. Kelly Boha. So fifty times five. <laughs> With the trees on board, the truck gingerly made its way over the trackway to Ken's farm, while the group's fitter members had a bracing walk. There were lots of willing helpers to unload the trees, including Dadatella, who is chairman and project director of the Malay Lilay Development Trust. Yeah. Are you worn out? No, yes. <laughs> Very pretty, good to get more. Can everybody have a drink before they do anything else, please? I want everybody to have a drink. How old are you? Nine. Nine. That sounds right. Nine. Nine. You? Ten. Your Ministry of Forestry and Land Reclamation told us to plant these trees. Do you understand me? Yes? They, they told us to plant these and what we do is when you plant them, you chop them right at the bottom and then you let one, two, three, three big growths come. Is the tree grows, not one trunk, but many trunks. 
and produces you wood that you can use to, to cook with. It can grow for you, that can grow for you at home so that you don't have to go so far fetch your water. to fetch the yeah. to fetch the wood. I'll fetch wood uh. Yes darling. Yes darling. So do you want us to get a spear in there then? Yeah, yeah you can scoop a little bit out. And then we can get No no. Oh gosh, it's dry, isn't it? Bone dry. That's fine actually, that's fine. Is it? We'll chuck some water in. Yeah. Pour some water in. Depth. Yeah. Shall I help you? Oh. How much can? Uh, that'll do for now. Okay. Shall we help you now? Well done, Myra. No, if they just loosen the soil a bit. We can get that guy in here. <laughs> okay. We're gonna plant. Always the boys that do the work. Give me the plastic. Yeah, uh, the plastic kind of. Yeah. Can Plastic. I plant it, Ken? You may certainly take that there. Thank you. Oh, so, so the little root balls come away. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. I've got come, it. I've come got through. It. Yeah. Whoops. Dear Lee Boha. There we are. And have we got some more water there? Is there any Do water in there? Yeah, there is. Yeah? Yeah. A small bit. Okay. That looks yeah, good. Yeah, it's okay. That looks good, Myra. Yeah. Yeah. Will you look after them when we go home? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this this feature here, this this ditch, is to stop the water from running away and taking our soil away to South Africa. We are keeping our water in the Sutu. We are keeping our soil in the Sutu. Yeah. South Africa has got enough water. South Africa has got enough soil. You need your soil to stay here. So what we're doing is we're making a ditch and when the rain comes, it fills like a pond. It fills and then it sinks into the ground. When it does, it makes this soil good to plant. Yeah? So we, when, we, when we get the big rains, we can plant our crops here so that um, the produce actually ends up paying Lorato's wages rather than our charity paying Lorato's wages. And the infrastructure that we're putting in, we've got Jojo's with full of water, we've got the drip irrigation system in here. Of course the capital expenditure for the polytunnels was quite considerable. But actually now we're beginning to see the crops producing you know, good fruits. Said we're selling, we're selling the green peppers and the tomatoes to Malayalaya Lodge. Malayalaya Lodge are very ha happy to uh, to support this local enterprise. What we're seeking is not a penny comes from here back to England, of course. The Christian Church and school are close to Ken's farm, and the younger children were out playing when we arrived. They were keen to be entertained by Val, Kay, Margie and Barbara and the songs and games that they played were designed to teach the children words and their meanings which at their age they probably didn't know. Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes.
It is difficult to say who is having the most fun. Both children and group members seem to thoroughly enjoy the afternoon. Okay, you run, 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 run. You've got to go run right round it. And I've got to chase. Keep going, Kate. Keep going. Keep going. That's it. You got that. You won. We are going back to our, our very first visit here with uh, the school children from uh, from Royston and Barnsley. We came in June, which is which is a cold month to be in Lesotho, and we saw many many fires, uh, many cook fires, and the most pressing thing that you saw was actually the amount of smoke that came from those fires, particularly when those fires were inside the round buildings, the dwellings called rondavels. And my best friend is actually a medic, um, Theo Weston, and, and Theo and I asked if we could go and see the practice nurse, May Makaliso. And we, wait, we went to see May Makaliso and we asked if smoke was a problem in her community. When asked the question, she said, and Daddy Ken, I can tell from someone's physiology what season, almost what month, my community members were born because of their physiology. Um, she said that smoke is killing her under fives, that smoke is killing her elderly, and smoke was rendering her workers blind and, diff and, and, and hard of breathing. I wonder how many of us actually uh, react to an impulse or actually see through um, a thought or a vision. Well, actually, uh, an amazing lady from Peter Maritzburg called Sarah Collins actually saw a grandmother wrapping a big heavy blanket and a number of cushions around a cooking pot and she looked at that and, and said let me take that principle of actually trapping the heat in a pot of food and let me design something let me develop something that actually could be of, uh, of, of significance and of mass use and Sarah has gone away, and it's been a rocky road for her, but she's been a, de a determined character, um, an, an amazingly inspirational character, if I may say. And she's actually gone away, and she's des and she's got this cooking bag called the Wonder Bag uh, developed, and it started life as a as a bag filled with polystyrene, post-consumer waste that was pushed into the chambers. And when numbers came, when orders came in for larger quantities, she looked for an alternative to polystyrene, which, which, which she was certain she was not going to manufacture. She was looking for, for waste that had the same thermal properties. And she found that in foam, dense foam, the, the type of which you actually you get from an airplane seat or a car seat. And she's actually got that foam, chipped it and put it in bags, and I've been a small part in the story of actually getting that wonder bag out into communities. Um, and I call them activations. And we are here in Lesotho right now on a wonder bag activation, taking this wonder bag into communities that do not know it exists and sharing with them the manner in which they cook themselves and then how they may cook if they use one of these wonder bags. In a traditional way, we would bring our beans to the boil. When the beans were boiling, we would actually take the pan lid off and we would stir to stop the beans from burning, yes? When we take the pan lid off, some of our water goes into the sky and some of our food goes into the sky too. Some of the nutrients in our food. What we then must do is we then must, because we've lost some water, we must add water. And then we put the lid on and then we make the fire again. So if we're using wood, we're using a big pile of wood, buckets of water and me all the time. I am here all the time. Yes? If I leave, my beans are going to be burnt. So I must keep 
stirring the beans, adding the water. So instead of using three or four hours of heat, we are going to use about 15 minutes of heat only. So if you use gas, you will save lots and lots and lots of gas. If you use electricity, you will save lots and lots of electricity. So this this is actually this is actually. Uh, can you believe that this bag? Feel, feel, come here. This is this is actually made in KwaZulu Natal. This bag, this bag, this bag is made in KwaZulu Natal. It is made from foam. It is made from foam, like. Uh, like you get on on the on this on the sofas on your seats, yeah. And, and this is an oven. This will cook your food for free. So if you pay for gas, or you pay for electricity, or you actually cut and carry and you use lots of wood, then this will save you all of that. So how long do you take to cook beans? How long for beans, man? How many hours? Three hours? I'm not sure. Okay. I never count. You never, you never count. But long time, huh? Yeah. So we, we are going to cook beans. Yeah. Bringing them to the boiler. Boiler that is piping hot. And then we are going to put the beans in this bag. And they are going to cook until we come back and see you on Thursday. But you can cook. You can cook them for four hours or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten yeah and the beans will continue to cook in this bag the beans are boiled for 15 minutes and then we're taking them off we're placing them in here we're folding this over we're putting this on top and then we're pulling the drawstring and we're sealing in the heat we are locking in the heat. We must not look. We must not open and see if our beans are cooking. We must only open when we are ready to eat. <laughs> we must not look until we are ready to eat. Because the heat is in the pan. It is cooking right now. It will cook for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours. No problem. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve hours. We are going to come back in maybe 24 hours and see those beans. And they will be soft. And they might be a little bit cool. And all we need to do is bring them back to heat. The interest was so strong that some of the ladies wanted to buy a bag without waiting the following day to see the results. In fact, Ken sold seven that afternoon. They are sold to the villages at well below manufacturing costs. Donations to Africa's Gift make up the difference. Yes. Yes. Okay. We left the beans slowly cooking in the wonder bag while we went on to Semen Kong, where Ken and the group were to give further demonstrations. Semen Kong means place of smoke, named after the smoke-like mist that rises from the nearby waterfall. In the 1880s, during a conflict with Britain, Semen Kong was a place of refuge for local people. Today, many of the men are cloaked in traditional Lesotho blankets and often wear Wellington boots. The excellent Semencon Lodge was built of local stone and thatch was used for the roofs. It's beautifully situated on a bank of the Melanson River and a perfect base from which to explore the area, possibly by a local pony or a mountain bike, or even abseiling down from the high cliffs. The first demonstration was given to a group of villagers who were gathering in a field in front of a house. We received a warm welcome and Ken introduced us to the lady who had organised the event. Very well, thank you. My name is Ken. Daddy Ken. 
Ken. Ken. Ken. And this is Henry. Henry, this is Val. This is Barbara. This is Moira. And this is Dina. And there is Brenda. And there is Mavis. And there is Daddy Sutang. Sutang. When the wonder bags leave the factory, they are compressed and have to be manipulated before they take on their full size and shape. Myra and Dina began by explaining the traditional way of cooking and, as few understood English, Sotang acted as an interpreter. When, when you cook, you cook over the fire and you put your, your food in and some water and you stir and stir and cook and cook for a long, long time. And you have to gather the wood for the fire. And the trees, they have to grow and they take the water out of the soil and everything. So the trees are cut, you carry them here, you put them on the stove. And also in the, in the steam that escapes into the air, all the good nutrition, nutrients from the food, some of it is lost. <laughs> To clean it, you only need a damp cloth. Not wash, 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 wash. Yes. Yes. Boiling. We have a boil so we can mix the maize. Is it boiling, Ken? Yes, come. It is boiling, so time. <laughs> so how much maize? You'll have to tell me how much maize. Right. Maize. Come, Sotang, please. Well, I pour it and you, and you tell me how much. Bombe, come, come, come. How much? Can you? Ten. Bombe say, if she's here, you say stop she I... will stay and then we are going to put it in the bag. No will tell. She will tell. You want to stir? Let's see. Lots more. Ten. 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 Oh, see. Oh, you'll get burned. You'll get burned. You'll get burned. Turn it down a wee bit. Turn it down. No, turn the gas down. Ten. Ten. Turn the gas down. Turn the gas down. Not enough of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should have poured more straight away yeah, and then there's but, but less not, water. It's fine, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, all we now need to do is to get the heat in the pan, in the pan um, and also the pan lid. It's okay. important that the pan and the pan lid shall are I, hot. Shall I, do you want me to yeah? put it in? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, and I fold it over, fold these over, and then the pan. And then, where's the top? Here we are. You push that down. Yeah. No gas, no wood, no fire, no electricity. After so one hour, money. you can you open the bag and it's ready to eat. And you, you can leave, you can go and see friends, you can play with the children, you can do something else. You don't have to sit and stir. But most, most important for you, you don't inhale the smoke. So I think we'll 
This food should be ready. So far, so 30, 30, 30. So, Tang? 30, 30, 30. That is so, do we tip it all in? Oh, I was going to give you like that. Is that all right? Is it, yeah? Is that okay? Can I do some more? You give me the spoon. Or the fork or something. Otherwise it's going to, because Ken wants to move us on. Just only a little. It's not going to spread out. It's not going to spread out. Is it cooked? Yeah. Is it cooked? Yeah. Oh, no, I'll give her some more. I'll give her some more. It was a convincing demonstration, only using about five minutes of gas, followed by well, about an hour in the wonder bag to cook the maize flour and make pap. A number of wonder bags were sold, but I wonder what the sheep is thinking about. Perhaps it's destined to end its life in a wonder bag. Before driving to the next location, it was essential to get some petrol. But the only garage for miles around had sold out, and Alwyn, our driver, was directed to a shed beside a rubbish dump. He had an anxious wait before the owner appeared with two bottles in his hand. Oh, they're all filled with coffee. Ken never misses an opportunity to demonstrate the virtues of the Wonder Bag and believe that they should not only be used in the villages but in Lesotho's lodges too. So here we are in the kitchen of Samongkong Lodge in Lesotho and May would you come please uh, uh, and, and come and open the beans. The beans were cooked at 8 o'clock this morning and we are now at 20 to 2. So they have been cooking for over five hours. Would you, would you like to come and open the bag? I just eh? want to see. Yes, come and see. It is going to happen. See if the, the beans, beans have cooked. Ready cooked. <laughs> Let me take that one for you. Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm feel. <laughs> oh. Okay. That's a me feel, feel the pan. Still hot. Oh. Is that, is that it? Come, come, come and see. Come and see. Bon me, bon me, please come and come and, come and touch the pan. This pan, this pan has been cooking. This pan has been cooking since eight o'clock this morning. No, no heat added to this pan. Daddy, did you, did you touch it, Daddy? Daddy, come, come and touch the pan. Yeah. So this is the, this is the heat that we put in at eight o'clock. Yes. So we're going to put we're going to put a little bit of salt, a little bit of salt, yeah, into the beans. We're going to put a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil into the beans, and then we are going to put a little soup mix just to give it a little bit of a little bit of flavour. So we've got no minestrone soup here. Yeah, we're going to put a little bit of a little bit of seasoning in there. So if you can mix that all in, me. Give that a good stir. Please, one more. Come on, Yep. This is for you, Ikaneng. Make it, Ikaneng. Where's my bow? I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah, there we are. Yes. 
Is it cooked? Yes. Oh, very so good. good. <laughs> they were just delicious, and I love them. And I will be making them at home. Another crowd had gathered at the last demonstration, and Ken soon had them singing and dancing. But by this time, all the wonder bags we had brought with us had been sold. Nevertheless, Ken took the opportunity to introduce them to the crowd with the promise that he would return at a later date and offer them for sale. Amongst the crowd was a representative of a company who had developed a sun stove, an ingenious solar heating device that boils water and cooks food using mirrors to direct the sun's heat onto the cooking pot. Could this be used to pre-cook the food ready for completion in a wonder bag? An amazing marriage, I love it. I love it. I just do. Yeah, because they, 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 uh, saves wood, saves water, saves smoke, saves, saves, uh, saves the planet, sister. <laughs> It'll work together. Yeah. The sky darkened as we drove back to Malay Lale. Soon it began to rain very heavily. The dried up riverbeds turned into torrents threatening to wash away the farmland. But we had a stop to make and check the wonder bag we had left cooking at Monasecu. So we cooked it yesterday. Come and see, come and feel. You can still feel heat. You can still feel the heat. Season was added to the beans and after well over 24 hours in the bag needed reheating and they were ready to serve. The girls certainly seemed impressed. While the rest of us were in Semen Kong, Margie and Kay okay, had stayed at Malay Lale so that they could visit an infant school. But we didn't take it down again this morning, but they have up not even a, a table to work on, which is just crazy. School visits were always done with permission of the head teacher and were designed to help the school as well as the children. All schools were starved of money and Margie and Kay discovered that the infant school did not have a table. So Margie made a donation to Africa's gift for one to be purchased and shortly after we arrived home the school had two brand new tables. When we visited the school at Ken's farm, the children were already assembled outside. Can you say Daddy Ken? Yeah, and I have some friends here from, from England. Okay, so we are from many miles away, but we are just like you. We are just like you. If you cut our skin, we bleed red. <laughs> we are just like you. We like your smiles and we are going to give you some smiles too. Yes? And and we and we are going to give you a song. And this song, this song, it has some actions. So we are going to need a little bit more space. We're going to need a little bit more space. So we need to spread out just a little bit more. You need, you need the space. Okay, 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 okay. Before we start, the most important thing is kindness. We must be kind to each other. We must not be pushing. We must love each other. Because there is too much, there is too much trouble. There is too much trouble in our world. We must be kind to each other. 
The actions to our song are a little bit fun. Okay, so you're ready. So it goes like this. Yes. One, one, two, three. It's you, it's you, it's you that builds community. It's you, it's you, it's you that builds community. It's you, it's you, it's you that builds community. It's you that builds community. Tra la la, rolling over the ocean, rolling over the sea. Coming to Lesotho to build community. Woo! <laughs> rolling over the ocean, rolling over the sea. Coming to Lesotho to build community. It's me, it's me, it's me that builds community. It's me, it's me, it's me that builds community. It's me, it's me. It's me that builds community. It's me that builds community. Tra -la -la. Rolling over the ocean, rolling over the sea, coming to the city to build community. <laughs> experience as a teacher, Ken took me first class and was able to explain to the children the importance of conservation and agriculture. Okay, just, I do want you to write this down. I would like to ask you what you understand by the word conservation. Could you look up for me conservation? I'd like you to understand the word conservation well, huh? Okay. Okay. So you look up the, look up the letter C. Here we are. By teaching in the classroom, followed by practical lessons on the farm, Ken is able to teach the children how to manage the land so that it can feed the next generation of Lesotho's population. <laughs> At the end of the day, the children were rewarded with a rare treat, chocolate. Yeah, well, well, these, these guys have worked hard. No, no, no. no. Let's yeah. give to them, please. The chocolate, yeah. Actually, no, I, well, so often when you work hard, you get reward. Another reward the children received was a gift of two trees for each to take home and plant in their gardens. They would be of benefit to all the family. And Ken explained how important it was to water the trees after planting. But, but they, they like water. The more water, the more you're going to get growth. Yeah? And the more wood you're going to get. Okay. Before going home, everyone posed for a photograph. Three! Conservation Agriculture! Mike Jones, the owner of Mullaly Lodge, and Ken were very good friends and shared the same interests in helping the Suthers poor. But Mike had passed away a few weeks before we arrived. He was highly respected in the area and family and friends gathered at the lodge to join the procession to take his ashes and scatter them at a nearby site. Some wore traditional blankets, a practice that dates back to 1897 when Queen Victoria visited Lesotho and gave its king a blanket as a gift. The king wore the blanket over his shoulder as if it was a poncho and the people, who had a great respect for Queen Victoria, soon took to wearing the blankets and the practice has now spread across the kingdom. They are designed using colourful traditional symbols and woven in South Africa. 
and not only are they worn for warmth in the mountain areas, but as a status symbol. One final drive along the Mumpy Trackway took us to the church at Ken's farm. At the wheel was Natatello, Ken's main contact in Belaylele, and on this occasion he was to take the role of priest. was invited to read from the Bible. From the book of Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. When I came to you, my brothers and sisters, to preach God's secret truth, I did not use big words and great learning, for while I was with you, I made up my mind to forget everything, except you read... Barbara, a Methodist minister from Rotherham, also took part in the service. It's not the Lord might be my shepherd. Or it may, God may be if he wants to be. But David who wrote this song said the Lord Eventually, all our group was invited onto the stage. Uh, may I introduce, uh, there's a group from, from England, from the University of the Third Age. The University of the Third Age, which is retirement. If we make it, if we make it there. Uh, so please, if you could introduce yourselves uh, one by one. I'm Barbara. I'm Brenda. I'm Val. I'm Kay. I'm Mavis. I'm Moira. I'm Dina. I'm Roger. Okay. Felicity, we will have a couple of days. See you there, Sina. Good one. There is one member of our team that was unable to travel. Uh, Faye lost her father two days before she was due to fly. So she is with us in spirit, huh? She was on her own journey because she had lost her daughter when she was 12. So hopefully she will join us someday in Malayale. Faye also did quite a lot of fundraising to enable people in the community to access the Wonder Bag. So if there are people in the, in the, in the congregation who have yet to purchase a Wonder Bag, Faye may have enabled that to happen because we have some in Malayalia Development Trust. Uh, also there are messages on the tree in remembrance of a very special man, Mr. Mick Jones from Malayalia Lodge who we lost uh, so recently. What we've done is we've asked people back home to, to write in a little message or a dedication for someone who has passed away. And we have remembered those people's passing by writing a message on a tree, by then planting a real tree in the community 
on behalf of that. This one is for Faith in memory of her daughter Gabby, who was the inspiration for Faye helping Africa. In memory of Dina's dear daughter, Helga Catherine Charles, a wonderful short life. And this one is in memory of Alf and Jeannie, loved parents and grandparents, always in our hearts. May this tree blossom just as the people of this region continue to do. We have a song and you are welcome to join in. There are some actions for, for everyone. Okay, on three then. One, two, three. It's you, it's you, it's you that built the community. It's you, it's you, it's you that built the community. It's you, it's you, it's you that built the community. It's you that built the community. Ra la la, rolling up the ocean, rolling up the sea. Come to the super the milk of you today. As we drove away from Malaylele, I believe we all felt our journey had been worthwhile. We had helped the children in school and on the farm and helped to promote the Wonder Bank. Also, we had made a few friends along the way. We had to make an early start as we had a long drive ahead, about 10 hours across the farming lands of South Africa. Our destination was Kedar Lodge, where we could relax, and it was within easy reach of a national park, where we could see some of Africa's wild animals before making the journey home. The lodge was previously a farm owned by Paul Kruger, a military leader and South African politician who came to prominence at the time of the Boer War. The numerous exhibits and artefacts displayed at the hotel are vivid reminders of the battles fought between the British and the Boers in the area. The moon was shining brightly as we made our first visit to Pillensburg National Park. We had to be up at four o'clock as early morning is one of the best times to see the animals. As the sun rose, we had our first glimpse of an animal, a sleepy rhinoceros. Driving on, with eyes peeled for any sign of anything, we were about to give up, then suddenly, a few feet away, there was an elephant wagging its tail. Oh, she's really close. I have to get in her way. It's the one in the tail, I mean, it's not me. It's all the way to take Meeting another bus, the drivers exchange words. What had they seen? Was it something special? It turned out to be a pride of lions sunning themselves by the side of the road. And a jackal take on. They'll bite lions by the tails and they'll bolt the land. The lions will chase them in the up. Remember, these guys sleep a minimum of night. Okay. Oh, oh they're all going in. Yeah, wow. Well, good. Good one. That really scratches me. Ha ha ha! I bet. Oh, I'm 
Perhaps they had got tired of our presence as one by one they wandered off and the show was over.